Hello friends, this video on metal and non-metal part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1. So now, having told the reason why we are studying metals, the history of metals, let's understand the physical properties of metals. So metals has some physical properties. You see, all the metals which we have seen just now in the previous slide, they shine. Everything has shine. So you can say that metal in the pure state has a shining surface. And please note this physical property is not applicable to all, maybe there will be exceptions because the main definition for metal is anything which loses electron, right? So that is the main definition. So we don't define metal based on the physical properties, but on the chemical property. And the chemical property is that anything that loses electron. But when we have defined the metals, we observe that most of the metals, I'll say most of the metals are have shining surface. So they have they, these properties called metallic luster. So if somebody asks you what is metallic metallic luster, you can say that metals in the pure state, most of the metals in the pure state have a shiny surface. If you see the gold, it shines. If you see silver, it shines. Right? Copper shines. So most of the metals has a shiny surface. Right, and this property of the metal is called metallic luster. Hope you understand this. Most of the metals have shining surface, and this property is called metallic luster. And please note, most of the metals I'm telling. So, for to act to do activity on this, because I just told you, you just want to prove yourself, right? So, this cut on. So you can take some sample of iron, copper, aluminium, and magnesium from your lab, and it look exactly like this, right? And just note the appearance of this. You'll observe that they are shiny. So what you can do if, if the lab assistant has not given you a clean one, what you can do is you can clean that metals by rubbing them with sandpaper. You know sandpaper, uh, paper which has sand uh, stick to it. So you can clean stuff with that. So you can clean that and you see it, it, it glows actually. You know, it, it has a shine and thus we can say that metals have shining surface. If you talk about the hardness, you will see that most of the metals are hard. I am telling most of the metals. For example, sodium is not hard. You can cut with knife. But most of the metals you can't cut with knife. You take gold, you won't be able to cut with knife. You take silver, you take iron, you take copper. It is difficult to cut with knife. So that's why I say that metals are generally hard. That means most of the metals are hard. It's not the rule that metals has to be hard. But most of the metals are hard, right? And the hardness varies from metal to metal. For activity, what we can do is we can take again iron, copper, aluminium, and manganese, right? And try to cut these with a sharp knife. And you'll observe that you'll not be able to cut these. And that's why we can say that metals are hard, right? You can do this in your lab. You get these um, metals, piece, small piece in the lab assistant, and then try to cut them with a knife. You'll observe that you'll not be able to cut those things right now you take sodium sodium is also metal and now we have to be cautious because sodium is very reactive the moment you take out we burn also then you have to hold that with the pair of tongue and then try to cut it and you see that you are able to cut sodium it doesn't mean that it's not a metal it is still a metal because the reason the definition of the metal was anything that loses electron is metal and sodium very well loses electron so in that case sodium is a metal but this physical property doesn't match so most of the metals are hard but sodium is not hard so as i told the physical property is not for all the metals some metals follow in fact you can see that 95 percent of the metals follow that and maybe five percent has doesn't follow that so maybe we can, so with, since 95% follow, so we can still create a general rule saying that most of the metals are hard, most of the metals have shining luster, right? Now, malleability. Malleability is something which can be beaten into thin sheets, right? So, for example, if you see that you have this metal, you take the hammer, beat it, beat it, you can get something like this, the aluminium foil, if you see, and this is the, this container you, you must have used or you have seen in the... Hotels, when you take parcel, they generally put the stuff in this kind of uh, container. They are all aluminium. So here, if you see, it is very, very thin, right? If you see, very, very thin, very, very thin. So, so 
the property of any metal to be beaten into thin sheet is called malleability. Please note, malleability is nothing but if, if we can beat a metal, this metal let's suppose into thin sheets, that property of that metal is called malleability. So most of the metals are malleable. Obviously, exception sodium, you can't put and you know, make a thin sheet of that. But normally, if you take iron, also if you take if you take aluminium, gold, they are all malleable, right? You can uh, you can take hammer and you, you just uh, hammer, 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 and then you'll find that it will it will be a thin sheet. For this also, if you see that gold and silver are the most malleable metals. Gold and silver, they are most malleable metals. But they are not used for aluminium foils. Why? Obviously, because it's very costly. So you can't afford a aluminium foil to you know to wrap your food and throw it because it's very costly. So generally, we use aluminium because it's a little cheaper, right? So for this, the activity is uh, you can again take iron, zinc, lead, and copper, and then you, you know place one metal and just hammer it. You observe that the thickness will decrease, right? For example, this is this much thickness. After hammering, it may become this much. And expand the area. That means you see that you are decreasing the thickness. And if you keep hammering it, you may observe that you may get a thin sheet like this. And that's what, if you see that, it means that it is a uh, malleable substance, right? Similarly, so ductility is nothing but you have the ability to draw the metal into thin wires. Thin wires, for example, you have this metal and you convert into small thin wires. Then it's called ductility. Please note, malleability and ductility are different. Malleability means you have to convert that into thin sheets, and ductility is nothing but you have to convert them into thin wires. Both are different. Gold is the most ductile metal, and you know that you can make two kilometer length of gold from one gram of gold. One gram gold is such a small amount, and then from that you can make two kilometer length of it's such a ductile element but still we don't use to we don't use that to create jelly um, the wires because it's very costly so we use copper right so similarly the next physical property is uh, good connector of heat most of the metals here also i'm telling most of the metals are good connector of heat and if you see this aluminium utensil in the home or steel utensils i won't use steel now because steel is not a pure metal anyway aluminium utensils if you see uh, or copper utensils you see why it is used because they are good connector of heat so if you use some burner in this uh, you gas stove it should conduct heat and that's why and then only the uh, um, food here will boil or cook right so metals are generally good connector of heat good connector of heat means it will conduct heat they have a high melting point and that's the reason if you see uh, the same picture uh, that's why it is used generally for the um, utensils because they won't melt so easily, right? If, if it has low melting point, for example, if you take paper, the moment you put in fire burns or uh, in plastic, right? If there's a low melting point, the moment you put it inside near fire it melts, those kind of stuffs can't be used for making uh, uh, utensils, right? Generally, high melting point stuffs are used to make utensils because it can resist heat because when you are cooking, uh, it gets the heat. So if, if it is having low melting point, it may melt. So generally, uh, metals are used because metals has high melting and boiling point. Tungsten has the highest melting point, where silver has the lowest boiling point. So this is something to remember. Uh, there is no concept in this. It's all based on observation. They have found that tungsten had this uh, highest melting point and silver has the lowest melting point. For this, somebody would have done the experiment in the lab, they would have taken all the metals, find the boiling point, and they found the tungsten has the highest boiling point, uh, melting point, and they found that silver has the lowest boiling point. Sodium and potassium has very low melting point. So, sodium and potassiums are metal, but uh, generally it doesn't follow the physical property of the metal. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't, it's not hard, right? It is, um, uh, not malleable, not ductile. So in that case, you can see that. But anyway, sodium and potassium has low melting point. They are all the exception here. Good connector of electricity. If you see most of the wires, or the wire which we use in home, they are all made of copper. Most of them, right? Because copper is a good connector of electricity. So similarly, metals are generally good connector of electron. So most of the metals are good connector. 
most of the metals are good conductor of electricity similarly sonorosity if you see the bells in the temples right so the moment you uh, hit it it makes noise so that property is called sonorosity it should make noise if you take um, iron if you hit the hammer it make noise right so if you have a coin you drop it make noise why because it's sonorous and most of the metals are sonorous high density metals have generally high density they are heavy they have heavy weight and that's the reason if you see the weights which you use or the hammers right the hammers if you see is uh, use of me is metal metals also the weights which you use in the shops you must have gone right they use a weight for example this is 1 kg weight 1 kg weight 2 kg weight all the weighing weights they uh, use in the shops you must have gone in grocery shop right something like this it says 1 kg and they use it to weigh why they use it because they are all metals and they are heavy so with a small size you get 1 kg so that's why they use the um, uh, the metals in that case so the point i'm trying to say is metals have high density and here iridium and osmium has the highest density whereas lithium has the lowest density please note lithium has the lowest density and iridium and osmium has the highest density so chelly metal has high density thank you visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again